morning. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of March 2nd, 2017. I'm City Councilor Bill Dwight and I will be presiding. Um, as is our custom, we invite the public to speak at this point um, with uh, some parameters. We ask you to limit your remarks to three minutes um, and there will be a timer. Uh, when you step up, please identify yourself and state your address for the record. Um, we ask that you comport with uh, the decorum of the chambers, and that is to say not to defame individuals. You, as I often comment, you can defame us because we're public figures, so you can say whatever horrid things that you want about us. But at the same time, uh, we are public figures. Other people are not. Your neighbor, for instance, is not a public figure and, and should not be mentioned by name. Um, the also, we're going to have a public hearing on uh, a poll petition, and that's separate from the public comment section. So uh, people here who are here to testify to that or have questions about that, that will come after the public comment once we go into regular session. So all that said, do I have some, anyone signed up? Oh, well, okay. We'll <laughs> okay, James. James Winston, step up. You're the only one signed up there, so. Okay, so uh, my name is James Winston, 234 Crescent Street, Northampton. I'm going to try and talk fast because I'm going to cover two topics. I'm going to do about a minute and a half on each. So the first one is about um, the smoking issue downtown. Does this council have any authority to go to the Board of Health and say, uh, can we pass some type of resolution about the secondhand smoke? Can we prohibit it? Years ago, people smoked on airplanes. They smoked in restaurants, in bars. They smoked in stores, and, and now we prohibit it. Uh, secondhand smoking, we all know about the effects of secondhand smoking, and, and it deters people downtown. And uh, I, I made an analogy about the uh, people can drink alcohol in their home, but they can't walk around on the streets with an open container. That's against the law. And is there any power in this council to go to the Board of Health with some type of resolution encouraging some restrictions about secondhand smoke, especially people that are in front of buildings. It's just, it's a, it's a hard problem. Um, my second thing I want to get to also dealing with downtown is the graffiti on uh, specifically two different things. We've got vending machines that I think the city has a little bit more power to do in the uh, mailboxes, also known as relay boxes. And some of the graffiti that's been on there, it's been on for years. And some of it's profane. The one in front of um, Bank of America, my building, 144 Main Street. It's a relay box. That means the uh, letter carriers store mail and, and take it out there. Um, it says, get F you. There's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, vulgar word, and it's been on there for years. And um, outside City Hall, that mailbox is graffitied up. It, this is Paradise City, Northampton, and we have these eyesores of graffiti. And the postmaster actually has a division of maintenance of people that will uh, that are supposed to be in charge of restoring, making sure the mailboxes uh, look appropriate. Could this city council, could the mayor um, put some type of pressure, a request to them that this is years that they don't take care of their mailboxes, their relay boxes, and it's an absolute embarrassment. It certainly doesn't make people feel welcome when they come to downtown Northampton to have those um, uh, those comments on them. And as far as the vending machines, um, and we've got them all over, including, again, outside my building, whether it's for the Valley Advocate or, or for these other publications, they're graffitied up. Why can't the city go to those owners and say, we're going to give you you know, a week, two weeks, to rectify this issue, paint over it, replace it, do what you have to, or we're going to remove them because they're also an eyesore. And I think the city has a little bit more power to do that as opposed to the mailboxes and relay boxes where you're going to have to work through the postmaster. But I implore the city council to, to take the issue of the secondhand smoking downtown and the graffiti, which is a terrible eyesore. Uh, and if there's anything you guys can do about it, it would be great. Thank you so much. And that's exactly <laughs> Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, James was the only one we had signed up. And also the one thing I want to mention when you sp speak in public comment, when you ask a question, it has to stand as a rhetorical question because we <clears throat> part of our rules are this is your opportunity to speak, this is our opportunity to shut up. So 
but this is conversations that you can certainly have outside the chambers as well. Is there anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Thank you all. I'm Dan Cutler, 47 Orchard Street, Ward 3. Um, just taking a look through here, I wanted to um, commend Councilor O'Donnell on introducing uh, last week the ordinance to fix the minimum wage loophole in the city charter. Uh, I hope that you all pass it tonight. Um, and also at the last city council meeting two weeks ago, there was some discussion about how do we get people to show up to budget hearings. Um, as somebody who has been looking to be more participatory in city government and part of greater processes throughout the city, I can say that before this year, before I started actively scouring the town website for this information, I did not know that any of this was going on. The town website, the city website, excuse me, um, is sort of woefully short on that kind of information. If you go to the front of the web page, there's nothing that says, how do I get involved? So there's nothing that says, how do I participate? I understand this isn't in your purview. I'm also kind of saying it so the people in the back will hear and so that'll be entered into the record. But when it comes to publicizing events like budget hearings, I implore the council to go beyond the traditional media methods. It's great to advertise in the Gazette, and I know a lot of people read it, and I'm glad they give you free advertising. But until you launch some kind of a more targeted campaign that actually gets people where they live, specifically on social media, is what I'm thinking of, um, you're gonna continue to see a lot of empty seats in a lot of very open rooms. Thanks a lot, have a good meeting. Thank you very much. Anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Okay. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Present. Present. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. 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 We have a quorum, so we are convened. Um, the first item up is the public hearing that I referred to. This is uh, item 17.236. Uh, this is a public hearing concerning a petition to locate poles, wires, and fixtures as described on Barrett Street. The petition is from National Grid and Verizon New England. Uh, in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws, a public hearing will be held tonight here in the Council Chambers at 212 Main Street on the petition of National Grid and Verizon New England to locate poles, wires, and fixtures upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways in the city of Northampton. The petition concerns pole number 15 on Barrett Street, as described in the attached plan that we have. Um, so I'll accept the motion to open the public hearing. Move to open public hearing. Second. Okay. All those in favor of opening the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we are convened. And what we do is we uh, traditionally we will start with <coughs> the opponents and then opponents or people who just have questions. And, oh, look, there's Lisa. Good evening. <laughs> Hi there. How are you folks? Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. We are just requesting permission to relocate pole number 15 on Barrett Street. There's a new little development going in right at that location, and the pole where it sits is in the way of the new driveway into this development. The pole is going to move about, I I think it's at about seven or eight feet to the east of the existing location. Um, are there, okay, that's, the, the, we've heard from the proponent, are there any opponents or people with questions that they'd like to ask? And just step up and state your name, please, and your address, Peg. I'm Peg Murray. I live at 99 Barrett Street, which abuts uh, 95 Barrett Street. And I think I had all my questions answered in the hallway earlier, but just for the benefit of other neighbors who uh, came today, um, Lisa did respond to my questions. I think this involves one of two telephone poles uh, that uh, provide service to my house and the house at 95 Barrett Street. And um, my questions were relative to the Comcast service because Comcast was not one of the services listed on the notice to abutters and uh, how, what the impact would be in terms of Comcast service uh, since that provides telephone, internet, and email and uh, entertainment. And um, I think uh, the other questions had to do with the disruption to the service and uh, how long that would occur. 
how long we would be out of service. So I'll let you explain those if you'd like to, uh, so the neighbors uh, know the same information I do at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, would the neighbors be okay if Lisa explained that rather than, or do you want to step up and speak at this point about? Uh, I, I, we need more information before we speak. All right. Well, Lisa, would yeah, you mind? I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. Um, just, just so you know that when we set the, when we, what we're going to do is we're mm -hmm. going to relocate the pole where it sits. We'll set the new pole and it's going to sit right on, right directly under the existing wires. So we'll attach those existing wires to the pole in place. Existing wires going along there? Too. Yes. And then they should be able to detach the wires that are on the pole that we need to move. I wouldn't anticipate actually an outage for this. If there is, they would knock on doors. They would talk to anybody. I could, I could even look into it to make sure I can notify all of you folks that um, if for some reason they feel that there's a need for an outage, but I, I don't anticipate one. So it's, it's going to be an area thing. It's not going to be underground. Correct. Correct. Going into the property, eventually it will be underground, but that's going to be brand new. Yeah. That won't have any effect on the existing. And as I understand, the responsibility of the underground services is of the developer, is on the developer? Yes, it is. Okay. Would Thank you like to speak to those points, or would you just, <laughs> you're not obliged to, but. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, are there any questions? I think that just, she has just a brief question about how Comcast is handled, and it just goes in underground, and you have Comcast going into the development. I am assuming so that will, you know, continue her Comcast service. Um, and, and you're nodding yes. Yeah, Comcast is just one of the array of services, and it will be handled the same as all the rest of them. Can, can I ask you for the record to identify yourself, please? Yeah, I'm Shaw Perry from Sunwood Builders. Okay. Uh, there's also a memo here. Um, uh, DPW uh, memo and it includes um, there may be a possible conflict with sewer lateral coming from house not, uh, 99 so we require the following course of action one trace and locate the sewer lateral from the house number 99 and mark its location to determine if there's a possible conflict if this is not possible two hand dig the pole hole to confirm no conflict with sewer lateral Three, when the sewer lateral has been traced and or the hole has been dug, it must be inspected by this office, the DPW, to confirm no conflict with the sewer lateral. And four, if the sewer lateral is disturbed in any way, it must be repaired, relocated by the developer at the direction of the city engineer. And, and are you aware of this memo? I am aware of this You're memo. You're aware of it, but mm -hmm. the, does it since... Pertain? It does pertain to the installation of the new pole. And I spoke with Felix originally and even today with Dave Valletta again, so we'll be in continuing conversation until that poll gets set. Okay. So who has the ultimate liability here in the event that the lateral is disturbed? That was part of our discussion today. Yeah. Okay. But we will ensure that there, that, that we, uh, we make sure that uh, we're very careful with this sewer <laughs> lateral. It comes from this woman's house. It's the right. drain line from, from 99, right. you know, Street. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just for the record, I'm Jesse Beerward of 92 Barrett Street. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, questions from the council. Councilor O'Donnell and then Councilor Labarge. Uh, just um, describe the process. When this comes up later, we may or may not engage in additional discussion. So I just wanted to kind of, for clarity, get a sense from the neighbors if there's any objection to approving the poll petition tonight. Um, I just wanted to kind of double check on that. Sounds like perhaps there's not. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Council Labarge. That's I was going to ask the same thing. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll accept a motion to close the public hearing. So Make moved. Motion. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 So we will be voting on that, oddly enough, on our uh, right after <coughs> we hear from, if we're going to hear from the mayor. Uh, then we'll be voting on that petition in just a moment. So, uh, and the next <coughs> we, next item we have uh, recognition and one minute announcements by councilors. Councilor O'Donnell, um, I'll just announce a public meeting. Um, the uh, Department of Transportation is holding a uh, uh, public meeting about a proposed uh, roundabout to be constructed at North King Street and Hatfield Street. 
um, and this is a design uh, a design forum. Well, it's a it's a design it's a public meeting they hold at a certain um, stage of design, and so that is going to be Monday, March sixth at 6.30 p.m., and that is at the second floor of City Hall in the hearing room, if you're interested in that. Councilor Shara. Um, on Monday, March 20th, the North Hudson Democratic City Committee is having a, um, a general meeting and then breaking into wards meeting. Um, so that's Monday, March 20th at 7 p.m., and that's going to be at JFK in the, uh, the cafeteria. Councilor Nash. Um, on uh, March 9th, next Thursday, um, uh, uh, Valley CDC, the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, and myself will be sponsoring an informational meeting uh, for the proposed development of the um, of Sergeant House on Bridge Street. Um, it, it pertains to the, the overlay that we'll be considering. Uh, there's the public hearing on the 13th. The idea of this uh, meeting is to uh, allow neighbors and the public to show up and ask questions and, um, and vet the, the proposal ahead of time. So when they attend the public hearing, they'll have uh, information to um, engage in the conversation. So that's March 9th at Bridge Street School at 7 o'clock in the library. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Communications and proclamations from the mayor. Nothing. I get in a no. So we move on to the consent agenda. <coughs> in the consent agenda is also included the first item, 17.236, <coughs> which is to approve the poll petition request from National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated for a poll on Barrett Street. Also included is item 17.261, various appointments to committees. And this is to refer to the uh, Committee on City Services. On the Human Rights Commission, Nural Mohammed of 35 Michaelman Avenue, Apartment 2, and the term would run from February 2017 to June 2020, and this is replacing Natalia Munoz. The Housing Partnership, Kyla Pryor of 32 Bliss Street in Florence, the term to begin February 2017 to expire June 2020, replacing the expired term of Rachel Taylor Dowart. <clears throat> and then the Arts Council, we have Nicholas Guardia, of Nine Owaga Avenue in Northampton, uh, the term to start February 2017, expired June 2020. And this is replacing the expired term of Elizabeth Stone. And then Sarah Gibbons of 295 South Street in Northampton, again the term starting 2017, expiring June 2020. And this is replacing the expired term of Robin Glenn. And then finally, approve the minutes of February 16, 2017. Move approval. Well, that, that's been moved and seconded. <coughs> All those in favor of the uh, consent of, of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. And thank you all. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. <coughs> and now we're going to recess for the Committee on Finance, <laughs> which is presided over by Council Murphy. Thank you. So I'll call us to order and ask Pam to call the roll of finance. I'm here. Present. Present. Here. Excellent. Uh, and our financial orders tonight, the first one is 17258. It's an order to appropriate $1,668,582 for paving costs and for roof replacement at the Bridge Street School. Order that the city appropriate the amount of $1,668,582 in addition to the $61,050 previously appropriated under various votes of this council for feasibility studies costs, a feasibility study costs for the purpose of paying costs of roof replacement at the Bridge Street Elementary School at 2 Parsons Street, Northampton, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto, which proposed repair route project would materially extend the useful life of the school and preserve an asset that otherwise is capable of supporting the required educational programs and for which the city has applied for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, said amount to be expended under the direction of the school committee. To meet this appropriation, $26,681 shall be transferred from the Bridge Street School Parapet Project, and the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow $1 million 
$641,901 under Mass General Law Chapter 44 um, or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The city acknowledges that the Mass School Building Authority grant program is not an entitlement. It's a discretionary program based on need as determined by the Mass, Mass School Building Authority. And if the, if the School Authority Building Authority Board of Directors votes to invite the city to collaborate with the Mass School Building Authority on this proposed repair project, any project costs the city incurs in excess of any grant that may be approved and received from the Mass School Building Authority shall be the sole responsibility of the city and that if invited to collaborate with the Mass School Building Authority on the proposed repair project, the amount of borrowing authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the project funding agreement that may be executed between the school and the Mass building, School Building Authority. Any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of the insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such cost by a like amount. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Put on Second. Board. Thank you. And the mayor's here to talk about it. <clears throat> so uh, first off, this is language that was uh, provided to us by the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority um, and uh, in terms of the potential future collaboration we pretty confident we're, we're in collab active collaboration with them we applied and this council and the school committee authorized us to to move forward with that the Bridge Street project um, is about is a little over 1.7 million dollars um, to, to do the full roof replacement through the MSBA program MSBA will be re, uh, reimbursing us 54.79% um, of the cost of the project. Um, but as is often the case with state grants, um, we have to actually authorize the borrowing for the full amount. Um, this is, uh, you know, a little less than 1.7, but that's because we've, we're going to transfer some funds that we've already um, uh, um, authorized for that, the parapet projects that were referenced earlier. Um, so when we actually uh, come to um, paying for this project, uh, we're estimating that the city share will be about $781,967. Um, so we will not use this full authorization and eventually we'll come back to you and probably and rescind any of the remaining authorization. But this is the, the next step in moving forward um, with the Bridge Street project and to be able to access this, um, you know, almost 55% matching funds from the state to do this project. Um, so that's the that's the background. Right. Questions for the mayor? Councilor Barch. Uh, when was the last time we did a replacement on that roof? Um, probably, uh, we've done some patching, but probably the last time was when the renovation was done. I can get you the exact date. I think. Um, when the, uh, you know, we've, we've done some. Back, because yeah. I remember. Um, when the, when the, um, last major renovation was done on the building there may have been a, a roof, roof replacement done, and then there was a problem with that there has been some drainage issues uh underground drainage issues that had to be repaired um, but the roof is definitely um, in need of repair um, and so um, we're you know we're grateful that msba has this program in addition to helping communities build full brand new school buildings they have this emergency repair or repair program um, for larger capital items related to um, to schools like roofs. So we did a couple of them um, a couple of years ago, um, and now we're coming back. We actually did a portion of Leeds Roof as well as Jackson Street. Oh, no, Leeds and Ryan Road, rather. Um, and so now we're doing Bridge, and then we're doing the rest of Leeds. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Councillor Nash. Mayor, have we done the feasibility study already or that's going to happen as part of this or? Yeah, uh, we've already had a designer. Uh, we, we had to, the first step in the project was we had to hire a designer to do the feasibility work. Um, and so this is the estimated cost that we now move forward with. It'll, st it'll eventually have to be put out to bid, um, but this is what, this is the number we have from that designer uh, process that we had to go through first. Yeah. One in finance? No? All right, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. All right, and as the mayor mentioned, this is the 
anything for Leeds to finish the roofs at Leeds. Pretty much just change it from bridge to Leeds and, and then the same. And uh, Leeds, we have done part of the roof. We're just finishing the job with this one. Exactly. This is a, Leeds is a is a much bigger roof system, and so we're we're uh, we did we did the worst part of it before, and now we're going to do the, the rest of it. Exactly. So let me read read the order. It's order seventeen. 259. It's an order to appropriate $1,775,294 for paying the costs of roof replacement at the Leeds Elementary School. And again, it's the remaining portion of the roof because we've already done some. Uh, order that the city appropriate the amount of $1,775,294 in addition to the $60,714,000 previously appropriated under various votes of this council for feasibility cost study and um, for the purpose of paying costs of the roof replacement at the Leeds Elementary School, 20 Florence Street in Leeds, including the payment of all costs incidental or related there too, uh, which proposed repair project would materially extend the useful life of the school and preserve an asset that otherwise is capable of supporting the required educational programs and for which the city has applied for a grant from the Mass School Building Authority, set amount to be expended under the direction of the school committee. To meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow $1,775,294 under Mass General Law Chapter 44 or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The city acknowledges that the Mass School Building Authority's grant program is a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the Mass School Building Authority and the Mass School Building Authority's board of directors votes to invite the city to collaborate with the Mass School Building Authority on this proposed repair project. Any project costs the city incurs in excess of any grant that may be approved um, and received by the Mass School Building Authority should be the sole responsibility of the school. And if invited to collaborate with the Mass School Building Authority on the proposed repair project, the amount of borrowing authorized pursuant to this vote shall be reduced by any grant amount set forth in the project funding agreement that may be executed between the city and the Mass School Building Authority. Premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any perm, a premium applied to the payment of costs of insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter, one, chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, hereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. We have a motion of finance. Second. Second. All right. Same thing for another village. Same thing. Uh, the, um, the breakdown on this one um, leads the the leads project will be a little over 1.8 million dollars. Again, 54.79 uh, percent is the calculated reimbursement rate that uh, that the um, MSBA will reimburse us toward the project. Um, so the total uh, our total share uh, we estimate will be 830 thousand and fifty nine dollars. Um, so uh, these these two projects uh, you'll see later on, not tonight, but later on in the spring as part of the uh, capital um, uh, uh, projects that we'll be seeking uh, to move forward. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the mayor? It's basically the same mm -hmm. structure as what we're doing at Bridge Street, only to finish off leads. Hearing no questions. Oh, council. This is just a comment and to <coughs> point out to the public and may be confused about what it is that we're doing here. We're mm -hmm. essentially establishing surety with, uh, with a state agency that is providing us funding and we're saying that we can cover all costs. This is showing our level of commitment and once the project is complete, then we recover this, we, we don't actually borrow the full amount that's stated here. So that's the purpose of this is just to provide them with surety that we're not going to be deadbeats. And obviously, if they, if if they become deadbeats, we'll we'll probably you know we we'll have to reassess. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, we, we we will. The state not, has yeah. the right to be a deadbeat. We do. Yeah. What I'm just saying is that if for some reason the grant fell through, we're not bound to actually to borrow. This, follow through. Authorizing us to borrow this money, but we're not. It's, we yeah. And we'll, we'll know from them what's up before we. Yes, we would yeah. have to figure yeah. out because it would be a much bigger. Uh, you know, we're talking over three point five million for both roofs, so. It Large. But if they're going to pay over half of it, we are very happy to take their funds. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, any other? No other questions on this one. All in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. 
All right, the next one is 17260. This is an order authorizing joint operation of public activities agreement to implement Healthy Hampshire, Massachusetts in motion. Um, and so order that. Whereas Mass General Law Section 40, sub Section 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units. And whereas Mass General Law Section 40, Section 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the City Council and Mayor. And whereas the City of Northampton provides services to and shares <coughs> services with other municipalities. Uh, that the city acting as the lead community through the planning and sustainability department participate in a regional effort to reduce the risk of diabetes, stroke, and heart disease by improving our social, um, our social and built environment environments to enable healthier living and in doing so agrees to work cooperatively with municipalities in the region to implement Healthy Hampshire, Massachusetts in motion 1422 grant from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health under a federal Center for Disease Control funding program. I have a motion put on the floor? Make a motion. Second. Second. This is, um, this is one of a series of um, these sort of intergovernmental agreements that we ask you to vote on. Um, and this is one that we um, uh, was not part of the last big batch of them and we were just doing a review of some of our grants and uh, the city solicitor determined that we should probably take this vote um, because it is sort of a, a regional collaboration with other cities and towns. We're the lead agency uh, but we're working with other Hampshire County towns to promote um, a number of different things and we've been, you know, this grant we've been uh, working through and, and done, um, for example, the um, a lot of the public meetings around the um, uh, bike and pedestrian plan um, and some of the other um, initiatives have been have been through this. Um, you've heard this term um, healthy um, Hampshire uh, coalition or he healthy Hampshire. So we wanted to just have this vote um, just to make sure that we're in compliance. So this is basically acknowledging what we call intermunicipal agreements between ourselves and other and yes. We've done them for other ventures. Yes. When we do any of the things like the regional veteran services, mm -hmm. or we do, you know, weights and measures, or we do, um, you know, intercept agreements with communities. Anytime there's these agreements, we're supposed to have these votes. Okay. Yeah. Counselor, so, uh, why isn't this covered under the already uh, the agreement we already made uh, for uh, the authorization we gave for the 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 board of health that provides intercommunity. Um, support. I mean, didn't we? We've authorized that in the past too. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, that's a good question. I don't know what. Wh I'm not sure which agreement you're referring to. Well, our our board of health is. Um, d well, we s share a public nurse, right? Do we still do that? We used to. We used to um, yeah, that. and we have also done some title um, uh, septic uh, inspection right. work together. Right. Um, but this is a separate activity um, that's okay. not tied directly to the Board of Health. Um, it's actually okay. being led by planning and sustainability. Board of Health members are involved, but right. um, and boards of health in other communities. But so it is a little bit different than that one. Right. Yeah. 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 Could I just ask just for a brief background? I mean, how do decisions get made about using the grant money between all the all the communities? Uh, it's interesting because this one is a little more loosely defined it's mm -hmm. not it's fun uh, you know this was sort of a judgment call because we're the lead agency and we're doing some sort of countywide initiatives uh, this is why this is why we actually I don't think it was brought forward the first time because it's not like a, 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 a well-defined group of towns all applied together mm -hmm. um, to right. do it was more we're the biggest community in the county mm -hmm. And we got the opportunity to get this federal CDC funding as well as, and we had to show them that we were doing a regional effort like diabetes prevention and whatever. So um, it's not actually, uh, there's, there's outreach and participation with the other communities, but really we're planning and sustainability is really designing the okay. initiatives. Um, and of course we have to, we have to get the approval um, ultimately from DPH and CDC, whether they're gonna approve what we're doing with the money. So that's sort of, I guess, the check on it to make sure that it comports okay. with the grant. How yeah. long is the grant lasting? Is it um, at this, grant? I think it's actually, I 
think it may be a three-year grant. I believe that's, and I think we might be in year two um, of it, but I can verify that. No, that's okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Councilor Mark? Well, that was a question of how many years was this grant, but to me, just reading the language on this looks like an educational thing that's gonna be happening with other towns or cities, correct? Yeah, sort of Hampshire County wide in some cases, yeah. And uh, as I understand it, the it was solicitor decided to err on the side of caution and do one of these agreements. Yeah. Even though when this was started, nobody thought we needed to go this far. That was sort said, of the. You better do this to cover yeah, we, yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how many do dollars are we talking about in this grant? Um, I can get you, I, I, I should have brought more information about the grant. Um, and I can, uh, let me just see, I have some information here. Let me see if I can uh, try to remember. Um, we're not talking millions of dollars. I'm, we're talking thousands of dollars. So um, I can get that information for you before your second reading. Yeah. Yeah, I can fine. get you the exact. It sounds like a really nice thing, and it sounds yeah. like we're sort of backing into this yep. municipal agreement. Um, so yeah. any other questions for the mayor? Then initially, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, next, we want to report that on Tuesday, uh, we met with the city auditor and voted, the finance committee met with the city auditor and voted to accept the audit report for fiscal year 2016. Um, all of the financial departments were here, the assessor, the treasurer, collector, uh, Susan, the uh, finance director, the auditor uh, were here and the mayor was here and we listened to the audit. It seemed quite acceptable that people have copies of the audit to review, and uh, it made sense to the Finance Committee, and we voted to, to accept it. Um, Mr. Scanlon, the auditor, said that if the full council, uh, last year we didn't do this, but and in years past we haven't, but he said he would be happy to come and present to the entire body if when you review the material, <laughs> you want to do that. Totally, totally up to the council. We did ask him at the meeting if he'd be willing to do that at your request and he said of course he'd be willing to come in if you want to bring him in so we leave that at the discretion of the council no, sure. uh, what, what what exactly is the agenda item can i discuss can i ask that this thing be discussed in a cursory fashion right now or are you just making it well oh, certainly yeah if you if you've had a chance to review them and you have specific questions no i, I haven't but generally um i'm just wondering if there are any observations from the finance committee upon receiving the report and could inform our decision about whether we want to have them come to the full council. Um, he, he indicated that he thought we were a very well-run city. Mm -hmm. uh, the management letter did carry some, um, some requests for um, some further discipline on some cash accounts in different locations where, people, where departments are collecting fees he suggested, and in some cases, uh, the auditor reconcile and confirm things. <coughs> the ambulance, the, the fire department does that, but they want she wanted the auditor, uh, he wanted the auditor to, to audit that a little more closely. Mm -hmm. But in general, the comment from the auditor was that uh, it was a very well-run city and things were very much in order. It almost seems like he felt obligated to find things to put in the management letter, so it appeared he was doing what he was supposed to do. But everything seemed uh, very much, very much in order. Uh, but as I said earlier, he did say that if once you've reviewed the audit material, you choose to ask him to come in so you can ask him questions directly, he is very happy to do that. He's, you know, been our auditor for a while, is very familiar with the financial operation of the city. And having been here, you know, 10 years ago, that management letter was a little scary. It's, it's, he's sort of looking for things to improve at this point because things are running pretty smoothly. Thank you. I was just going to point out that the management letter uh, spelled out s a few very specific requests, mm -hmm. and um, the one that the hit that he said that we do have in place are a number of controls, and they're just we may we may need to better document those. Mm -hmm. And it sounded as though uh, the department heads had a plan for moving mm -hmm. forward with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that the department heads, along with the mayor, did meet with the auditor prior to the meeting with the 
you know, just got, we just got a review of it. And we got a review of it, in it and yeah. I, I think there was, when we talked to the department heads, there was consensus that everything that was recommended from the management letter was very doable stuff, and could every be year there is there are recommendations, and every and I think the other thing I would just mention is that there weren't anything that was in last year's letter it that was we bad. hadn't addressed. So pretty much every year we get a small to-do list of things you should do that. And there was consensus on the part of the department heads here that the things in the management letter were easily accommodated to change the, the procedures to make sure that that was all taken care of. Counselor? You know, I've, I've found in the past that it's been very helpful for me, and it's also helpful for the public when the auditor comes, at least gives a presentation mm -hmm. and explains. Mm -hmm. The, the dimensions, and also, you know, it's nice to get the attaboys out in public by a, someone mm -hmm. who is, who is, who is, whose job it is to see how robust and how well-functioning or high-functioning the city is. I, I think that would be helpful for him just to give that presentation. I don't think he has to get too granular, uh, but an opportunity for the counselors to discuss or hear from him directly um, mm -hmm. his perspective and, and understanding of the city's um, Financial structure. Yeah, and we did tell him that may be requested, and he was happy to do it. Some jerk like me is going to ask yeah, for, the, right. for the big dog and pony show. Right. Council Lavage? Yes, I have to agree with our council president. I, there is a lot of information, and I think counselors really should have the opportunity to go over it, and I agree. I think that the transparency would be fantastic to have the auditor here. Have counselors ask questions. So probably, you know, oh, counselor. Uh, I, I, I was going to say much the same thing. That as we're headed into a budget season where we want additional input and scrutiny, anything we can do to educate the public and, in some instances, assure them that it's an extremely well-run city, I think, would be helpful. Mm -hmm. My second comment was, um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware Scanlon Associates has been doing the city's audit for some time. One school of thought is there, it's appropriate to change auditors uh, every however many of years to get, uh, to get additional set of eyes looking at things. I imagine this has been discussed at Finance Committee, but I just wondered what the thinking was on that. Um, actually, we had that discussion just prior, just prior to your arrival. And uh, we have a conf contract with Mr. Scanlon for a couple of years. And to be reviewed at that, the point that that contract's up, uh, we did we did have that discussion when we contracted with Mr. Scanlon for another two years going forward okay and at that point it's up for grabs and it would be you know at the discretion of the the council who will consider at that point in time we did interview people the last time around we, we had uh, three interviews yeah and, uh, and Scanlon still came out on top on that mm -hmm. and that there's arguments on both sides the fresh eyes or the continuum Yep. Uh, legacy understanding so yep. mm -hmm. yeah yep. but that that will come around again, around again so mr. Scanlon was willing to come and visit the entire body and I would suggest that we leave it to the council president to decide when in the agenda to have him come and go over the go over the documents and please review them have your questions ready and he said he was very happy to come back and talk to us so, uh, at the council's discretion Yeah, I, I just want to add how impressed I was that, um, you know, with, with an audit report, you're, um, uh, that it's, it's, it's basically, it's, it's almost like getting a Corey report or a background check, mm -hmm. and that there's, the fact that there's nothing to report or very little to report is actually really impressive. Mm -hmm. And that, um, that uh, we, um, you know, the way we're managing our money uh, we now have the the AAA uh, rating um, that the city's really in good standing, and that the that the, um, the four different areas that um, Scanlon Associates you know suggested that uh, we look into you know they're not big, they're you know you should have two mm -hmm. separate columns instead of one for interest, mm -hmm. you know that it, it's that type of stuff and that. Um, that it's that really impressive work is going on. So, oh, Councilor Barch. Yes, and also um, being a counselor going on 20 years, I've talked with department heads, and they all have been very, very happy with Scanlon. None of them have ever, ever had problems with him. And I agree with you, Councilor Nash. I think they're doing a great job. 
and council you must remember 10 years ago there were some pretty major things in that audit that exactly. needed to be squared away and it really has rolled down to pretty mundane little tweaks to our our accounting and bookkeeping it, it's gotten much better councillor on all as, as we start thinking about uh the budget process for this year anew um and this, this exists electronically i assume is it, is it up on the website, website? Yeah. Awesome. all the audits are on the website for us okay quick quick uploading good job <laughs> yeah so please um and um counter dwight let us know when he schedules mr scanlon but it, enjoy those documents and have your questions for mr scanlon when he comes in but we were uh, the finance committee was comfortable enough to accept the report and uh, i'm have your questions for him i'm sure he'd be happy to answer them uh, the next thing is planning for the capital improvements uh, budget that is out i think everybody saw that this week and um, in past, the Finance Committee has done the public hearing from that for the capital improvements budget because it's a little bit different than the, the regular municipal budget. Program. Program. Capital budget. improvements program. Budget. Not budget. Okay. Program. <laughs> it says CIP. The, the concept behind having it a little bit separate is that the capital things are many of them are building projects and many of them revolve around the school department and the window for doing school building is July and August. And <coughs> so if we, if we include it in the regular budgetary process, that goes right into June. Um, if we do the public hearing for it in finance, uh, which everyone will post it as a council meeting everyone can come to, uh, the hope is we could do it at our, public, at, our, at our finance meeting at the end of this month and get it underway because what they'll need to do is bid contract and try and build before the fall and if it has to wait until june sometime to get approved those projects are not going to get completed uh, in time for school to start in the fall and i'd refer to the mayor about the yeah trying to accelerate the timetable so, at least on this part of the program yeah. uh, so i think you, you may recall in past years we brought forward some financial orders early like in april or may because we're trying to get them authorizations approved so we can get the bonding process started because we want to get the construction process started so that they can happen over the summer. Um, and so um, what we're planning to do this year, again, um, is the same thing, is that we're going to be bringing forward. So the Capital Improvement Program is a five-year program, rolling program. Um, it's not a budget. It's not, well, it shows financial numbers, but you're not actually voting to spend or borrow when you vote on it. Um, it's just the charter requires us to go through this process to show that we're planning and we're using a five-year plan. So, but you're right, concurrent with that, we've brought forward orders, and so we're, we are planning to do that again this year in April um, uh, to try to get some of these projects going, like i.e. roof projects, things like that. Um, that we want to time the construction uh, so that they're happening when school's not in session during the, the high construction season in the summer. So, yeah, so that, that's sort of the, the track. But that's, we've been doing that kind of unofficially, and I think this just we're just sort of saying what we've been doing the last three years. Um, so the suggestion would be that the public hearing on the capital improvements program be set up to be at the finance committee meeting at the end of March and then the, the, the council would still see, see the individual orders for the activities that are in the program but that we could get the public hearing taken care of so that the ball could get rolling in the projects so that they could get contracted bid and built before school starts in the fall Councilor great answer. <laughs> yeah I mean we have to do this by May 31st anyway so it's not going to happen in June no matter what we do but it's I it's I agree it's no harm in having a hearing sooner than later. Mm -hmm. The only question I raised you know, with the with the chair, just if you don't mind my suggesting it uh, to the full council, is could we roll the water and sewer hearing into this? Because at some level they're related. And I know we don't have the rates yet, so I don't know if the timeline works. But we talk about you know one of the biggest capital expenses we're looking at is the wastewater treatment plant, for example. And so obviously these things are related, and. Uh, I don't know, it seems like that might be possible to hold a joint committee hearing or something like that. Um, well, I, the, the, the lion's share of the work on water sewer is done by the Public Works Committee. And 
as long as the Public Works Committee has done their job, pro you know, the public hearing for that should be in the Public Works Committee. It probably is also going to finance, but public work should be done with it, I think, before we go to finance. Um, and I would, I would, that timetable would be up to the Chair of Public Works as to what the timing works. Because the night before your finance committee. Yeah, I mean, oddly enough. you know, certainly if, if Public Works is done with it the day before that 28th finance meeting, and it's all set, it could come to us, and we could, you know, we, we could take a peek at it on the 28th, but that would depend on public works being done with it, I think. You know, that committee has its work to do. So, I mean, certainly we could tend to put it on the agenda if public works is done. It just don't wanna, you know, that's its own process in public works, and that that should have its time. And just for the record, the public works committee will not be setting the rates. They will only be hearing from the public relative mm -hmm. to the rates. Mm -hmm. the, the mayor sets the rates. And um, it, uh, in, I believe Councilor Nash will be presiding over that meeting on the 27th, which would transition into the 28th. So whatever recommendations or discussion points that would come out of that um, to be folded into your meeting, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what those would be. And so I'm very happy I'm to have it on. Is the count, so you're suggesting doing a joint hearing of the, or a joint meeting? Yeah, perhaps you could have public works and utilities with finance. I just think it's a, it's like it's a question when we want to increase hmm. uh, citizen participation in the budget, and that items out of the agenda. So I don't want to talk about that much. But as it relates to the capital improvement program hearing, what's better, a bunch of hearings or fewer? And I actually think when the two things that go together thematically, like water and sewer and capital improvement to an extent, not a complete overlap, but some, it just it occurred to me it might be beneficial. Um, not necessary, obviously, we've done it this way before, and, and, but. And perhaps if they're ones the day before the other, you know, it certainly makes sense to put whatever comes out of the Public Works Committee on the agenda for finance the next day. But I don't think I'd like to combine them because I think they, that the, the, the water sewer issue discerns its own day and its own meeting, and it's only a day before. So if that work is completed there, then it could just, it'll be on the agenda for the next day and we can, we can take care of it there. But I, I don't think I'd like to combine the two in one meeting. Can I also just add one other thing is that, so I just prior to this discussion, I was saying that we're gonna be bringing orders forward in April. So you'll actually be, um, Theoretically, depending on how long your review process takes, you'll be um, voting on the water and sewer rates at your two meetings in April. Um, you will also have actual actual capital projects on your agenda mm -hmm. in April as well, because we're going to be bringing you borrowing authorizations and appropriation authorizations, including for <coughs> water and sewer projects. Mm -hmm. So you will have them side by side at a meeting automatically of the full council in April. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing that will take place. Because again, the capital improvement program is not anything, I mean, I realize it's sort of like, you know, what I, I mean, yeah. But I mean, you're voting on a program, you're not voting to borrow or spend or do anything like that. But obviously it's it's related, yeah. True, but it's an yeah. important document. Totally is, yeah. totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you're actually coming to borrow the money, or, you know, the the, the revenue assumptions we're making are based on the rate. So they are, so you'll have, so they'll be side by side definitely in April, but whatever you decide to do, I'm always happy to come to one meeting instead of two. That's always great. I mean, the public too. I mean, whatever you decide, I'll, I will, whatever you want to have the hearing or both hearings, I'm, I'm fine to do whatever you want to do. I, I think, I mean, part of, part of the appeal of what Councilor O'Donnell is describing is that of course the uh, last year, the meetings that saw the most, that garnered the most attention from the public were pr principally the rates. But of course, it wasn't the rates, it was actually the development of the formula, which created a, a, a very broad and change. And he has a, a, a nice in depth discussion and participation by the, the community and the good attendance of those meetings. Um, so, in in, you know, in the marketing world, just be like a loss leader. The idea was to somehow you have you have uh, the rates being discussed, and oh, and by the way, 
here's capital improvement projects that we're discussing going out five year our five year plan for that. Um, and I think Councilor O'Donnell's points relative to the fact that they they mesh nicely, but to the mayor's point, which I think actually is even just as cogent, when we have something as solid as actual proposed projects predicated on on the approval of, of or, or the projected rates, it might be an opportunity to exploit there. Probably be even sexier if I dare say that. Uh, that might be even more attractive because there would actually be projects on the on able to propose that would be would be appealing to people to discuss something that's a little more uh, tangible. So I mean, those those are just my two and a half cents. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 I guess hearing hearing arguments for, for, for both, my, my own preference would be to keep them as, 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 as separate hearings um, and devote full attention to water and sewer uh, and the following day, if that's the way the scheduling works out, full attention to the capital improvement program, especially knowing that this opportunity for uh, taking the, the concept and illustrating it as real in the ground projects will, 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 will happen in April. But I say that as a Public Works Committee chair who, as has been noted, will be uh, out of town that week. And so if other members, <laughs> uh, so Vice Chair Nash would be presiding over that hearing. So I would, I would I'd be interested in the feelings of other members of the committee, particularly the Vice Chair, as to how you'd rather handle it. I just ask if that's a hazing ritual that you <laughs> set up for the <laughs> council to preside over the water and uh -huh. stuff. I had another term for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got to say it would be my personal preference to keep them separate two days apart and um, I'm on public works so I would be there and Councillor Nash and I are both on finance and public works Plenty so of some of the people <laughs> stay the same but I'd really try and prefer to try and keep it on separate days uh, that way the function of public works happens in its environment and then if everything is completed there it comes over to finance the next day and then it moves on to get voted on because there's a lot more uh, capital program projects to discuss than just the water sewer projects they would get their own so that'd be my preference but as always I would fall to the infinite wisdom of the body as a whole depending on what your pleasures are so counselor yes now March 27th at what time four o'clock yes. and that public is work. right that's a joint and is no, that, that would just be that public work work. that would be public works for the water and then finance would be the next day at five but the agenda is what on the 27th stormwater is that the utility fee or what what is it water and sewer rates okay. not stormwater yeah. okay. which i will introduce to council at your next meeting right. on the 16th yeah. march 16th at our next council meeting mm -hmm. the mayor will present this with his rate proposals mm -hmm. Thank you. which you will then refer to finance and public works and utilities and if there was I could see if there was a great space between the two but back to back I would my preference that they remain separate and uh, and and by the way the, the council would would need to if you want us to do the the capital improvements program public hearing in finance what I'd encourage you need to ask us to do that because it comes to the council and you'd have to refer it to Any other discussion on? Oh, Council Nash. You know, since I'm presiding, I, I I'd like to keep them separate, and especially because I, I I suspect that the the discussion about the rates could be more prolonged and more involved mm -hmm. than um, capital improvements, and so um, simply just keeping them separate for now, I think, would help me out. <laughs> <laughs> And I think help uh, have the discussion be focused for those meetings. I won't prolong the discussion much more at all, but um, in advance of the hearing on the capital improvement program and probably to a lesser extent water and sewer, I'm just wondering if there's, you know, we can explore new methods of outreach as part of the whole budget issue that we've taken up as a body this year, which you may not want to discuss that much because it's on the agenda. But insofar as it pertains to the capital improvement program, maybe that's something that even individual ward councilors could think about. Certainly, capital projects in all seven wards. You know, so how will we go about telling our constituencies uh, that this is happening? 
not it's not the time we actually vote on the money, but it's a it's a fascinating document that the mayor puts a lot of work into. Um, so anyway, just something to keep in mind, perhaps. And and just so you know, that process has been going on for a while because the capital improve which process program committee um, has been meeting for quite a while uh, okay. to grade the projects and then turn that grading into the mayor. Sure, of course. So it, it's been this has been going on for a while to get to this point. Um, so if that's it's all on that one, and again, uh, these are decisions that the body makes as a whole when you decide where to refer things. Anybody have any new business in finance? Any, uh, Can I ask you to vote on the minutes? Oh, we skipped. We skipped right. I move the approval of the minutes. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Is that a second? I'll second. second it. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? We get right into the orders and skip the minutes. Hearing none, all in favor? Approval. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any other? Um, New business. If none, then a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. So we convene back from regular session now. Uh, and we go back to those financial orders. And first up is item 17.25A. That's to appropriate $1,668,582 for paying the cost of roof replacement <coughs> at Bridge Street School. This first reading. <coughs> to approve. Motions made in second. Further discussion on this item? Roll call, please, Pam. Thank you. <coughs> yes. 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 That passes in first reading. We'll be voting on that again on March 16th. Uh, item 17.259, <coughs> financial order to appropriate $1,775,294 for paying costs of roof, roof replacement at Leeds Elementary School. First reading. To approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this? <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. 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 That passes in first reading and also will be revisited on uh, March 16th. Item 17.255, this is in order to authorize payment of a previous year's uh, year bill for the Board of Health as second reading. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this? Roll call. Yes. 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 That's it. There's no more counselors. We just ran out of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that passes by. Uh, <laughs> that passes, including okay. one plus the the specter, um, uh, and that is the final reading on that. So, uh, second reading also for item 17.254. This is an order to authorize that premiums received upon sale of bonds used to pay project costs. Shall, re shall reduce the amount <laughs> authorized to be uh, to be borrowed by any such premium so applied. There's a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Mayer. Yes. Councilor Donald. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That passes in second. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I did miss one. This is item 17.260. This is an order authorizing joint operation of public activities agreement to implement, quote, healthy Hampshire, Massachusetts in motion slash 1422, quote, close quote, uh, grant. In this first reading, there's a motion. To approve. Second it. And second. Okay. Any discussion? Nope. We'll call on that. Yes. Yes. Oh, I thought you said. Yes. Council O'Donnell gets a vote on that. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. That passes. Way passes in second reading. We're we're overvoting tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
last <laughs> item is uh, under ordinances is 17.244. This is a, uh, an ordinance regarding the fair minimum wage, and it's a second reading. I'll accept the motion. To approve. Further discussion on this item? Okay. Roll call, please, ma'am. County Mayor? Yes. Council O'Donnell? Yes. Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Council Yes. Council Fine? Yes. Council Lavard? Yes. Council Yes. Council That passes in second reading. I have no updates. Uh, are there any committee chairs that want to share any updates? No. Uh, any information requests? New business. Well, we're left to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, you bet. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much.